sauce gang and welcome back to the channel hot sauce beats are with an educational reaction for you because in a nutshell has just dropped your time machine broke at the worst time in history question mark now i don't know what this is about is it talking about now's the worst time because of all the all the hate and drama going all around the world and everyone hates each other and no one can get along or is it talking about some other time in history that is definitely exponentially worse i don't know but i'm here to find out but before we do Please show in a nutshell some love by subscribing to the channel chat. We're trying to get to a quarter million subs. So if you haven't yet, please smash the subscribe button and join the Sauce Gang family. But enough talking. Let's get to reacting and roll that bomb ass intro. Hot Sauce Beats is finally here. Hot Sauce Beats is finally here. Eat, sleep, make beats. Eat, sleep, make beats. Hot Sauce Beats. Woo -hoo. Hold up. Wait a minute. What you got? Your time machine broke. And you're stuck in the right worst time in history. It feels like you stepped into an oven. There are no plants or any vegetation okay, so and almost no enough. moisture in the air. The sunlight <laughs> smashing down from the cloudless and weirdly colored sky is reflected by an endless sea of red and orange sand dunes stretching over the horizon for thousands of kilometers. That sounds Dust miserable. the size of buildings dance over the hellish landscape. You're in the early Triassic, hothouse Earth 250 million years ago, a few million years after the worst mass extinction in history. The planet is still suffering from a permanent fever. Volcanism and the runaway greenhouse effect has transformed the planet into hell. There's three to five times more CO2 in the air than in the human era. Wow. The formation of the massive supercontinent Pangaea led to the largest desert in history that barely sees any rain. The gigantic ocean is warm, even deep below. Two superheated currents circulate around the globe, pumping extreme Let's amounts of Let's go north or south. Let's go to the North Pole. There's no ice, even at the poles. Seems like you're stuck okay. in the center of the desert. So there's no ice in the North or South Pole. Ancient land masses, one of the most hostile environments Earth has ever produced. The deserts we know are still full of life, but not this one. Its core is starved of moisture, and the air is bone dry. Your skin dries out immediately, and your lips begin to crack. The CO2-rich air is easily 50 degrees Celsius and sears your lungs with every labored breath. This? The rubber soles of your boots begin to melt. Stop! If you touch the ground, you'll get burns. Your sweat evaporates before it could cool you, and your exposed skin begins to crack within minutes. Suddenly, it becomes even hotter as a red sandstorm envelops the landscape. Like thousands of tiny sparks, burning hot sand hits your skin. Ah. You're pressing your machine's buttons at random. It can't do time travel, but it can still move. You We're shoot over some of the like mightiest mountains Earth has ever seen. Eventually, you stop at the shores of the Tethys Sea. The vast shallow ocean looks more like a swamp among scattered groups of waist-high ferns and spindly stems with tufted foliage. A few Lystrosaurus feeding on them eye you curiously. The water is murky and looks sickly and milky. Colorful mats of bacteria float on the surface like oil slicks. The air is hot and humid like a steam room. Man, she's it's cooking, hard to chat. breathe and your Literally. sweat can't evaporate and cool you. Even the water can't give you any relief. It's as hot as a freshly run bathtub. This hot ocean can't hold much oxygen, especially in deeper layers. Bacteria and bivalves are the only species that thrive here. The waves get move sick. almost sluggishly through this thick bacterial soup. When they break, they leave behind a glistening iridescent film. Each wave that hits the shore releases a mist that makes your eyes and throat burn, kind of nasty, carrying chat. the rotten egg stench of hydrogen sulfide up from the oxygen-starved depths. Barely conscious from the heat and smell and CO2, you look at the horizon. A storm is building unlike any you've ever seen. Storm the is brewing, Chad, a storm! Uh -huh. energy, and with no continents to slow it down, it will dwarf the fiercest hurricanes of your time. You're doomed. Your broken time machine jolts and screeches. Something's happening. Oh, we just tra- BAM! You're near the equator, in the Lake Carboniferous, 320 million years ago. The atmosphere is thick with moisture. 
The climate is locked in a never-ending wet super summer without any other seasons. Colliding continents are covered by the largest swamps the planet will ever see. A paradise for plants growing faster than their dead biomass can decompose. The ground beneath is a warm, soggy mass of decaying vegetation. What will be an endless desert in 70 million years is now an endless alien jungle. A huge variety of life is thriving in this period. From your perspective, this wow. is not that great. You're lost in a maze of giant tree-like plants towering over a twisted undergrowth of giant ferns and endless varieties of bizarre and unfamiliar See, Chad, that's vegetation. That's what I'm saying. It, we're still going to be happy with what time period we're in. sweet decay, but breathing makes you dizzy. Your vision seems too sharp, your thoughts slightly frantic. The dense plant cover has supercharged the atmosphere with oxygen, 60% higher than in the human era, and your body is trying to cope. Which is great for the dominant land animals, which have conquered every niche of this majestic garden. Bugs. You're stuck in the golden age of arthropods. In this oxygen-rich world, they have evolved to sizes that will never be possible again. No! They are innumerable and everywhere. Armored cat-sized megarachne crash through the undergrowth, hunting a swarm of panicked rochoids that scatter in all directions. Above you, a griffin fly with wings spanning nearly a meter and beating like helicopter blades catches a paleodictyoptera mid-flight. Oh, you stumble God, I don't through mind the bushes bugs, filled with countless crawling I don't want creatures bugs that are same as size as me. Pure, the length of a car picks its way through the ferns, moving countless legs in hypnotic waves. You reach a swampy clearing and stumble into the shallow water, dizzy and terrified as a pulmonar scorpius rips apart its prey eyeing you with some interest. Here in the clearing, you can see the sky above the canopy glow shrieking red, intensifying at an alarming pace. The extreme humidity here creates sudden, violent thunderstorms. And the oxygen-rich atmosphere makes everything dangerous. That's what I'm saying family. again, Chad. We just Even gotta be thankful. Even the vegetation can burst into explosive flame with the slightest spark. Why do all of your trips end in a storm? Well, at least it will take all the creatures that want to eat you with it. Your broken time machine jolts back to life. The world is folding in on itself. You've woken up in the early Devonian, 400 million years ago. Most of the planet is covered in shallow seas, while the land is mostly rocky plains and mountains broken by braided rivers and mudflats. Earth is in a state of transition. For about 100 million years, life has begun to break down rocks into soil, a soft layer that enables plants to grow and life thrive. Okay. The ozone Things are starting is to grow. building up, fed by organisms releasing gases. Recently, this process has been speeding up. The land is turning from toxic to semi-habitable. The sky looks wrong somehow. Semi-habitable. The sun blazes harsh and white, barely filtered by the unfamiliar atmosphere. The air feels thin with only 15% oxygen compared to today's 21. Each breath feels shallow and unsatisfying. You're on the verge of passing out and can only move slowly. At least it's currently moderately warm and not so stormy. So no running, chat. But it's no, what dominates these lands no that makes this world truly nothing. alien. Reaching up to eight meters into the sky are massive obelisks of fungal prototaxites. As you Whatever walk that's closer, called, fungal, you notice spores catching the sunlight, drifting through the air like tiny stars. Your movement disturbs more of them, creating clouds suspended in the thin atmosphere. They coat your skin with a fine, powdery, itchy film. You try not to think about how many you're inhaling with every breath in this oxygen-poor air. The ground feels nothing like soil. It's mostly rock, partly covered by a thin, slightly springy layer of decomposing matter. Some shallow water pools reflect the pale alien sky above. Between the fungal towers, there's a carpet of smaller fungi and a few alien-like primitive yeah, plants. Bro. No flowers, <laughs> I'll pass. no leaves, I'll pass, just chat. strange green stalks and fern-like structures that reach your ankles. Around you, the fungal towers rise like pale pillars. Their surface is neither smooth nor rough, but something in between. They're neither wet nor dry, slightly yielding under your neither touch. Neither wet nor dry, Small chat. patches of what might be lichen create splashes of muted greens and yellows on their surfaces. The only animals you can spot are a few insects burrowing into the large mushrooms. 
Everything is eerily quiet. You sit down on a rock. Is this it? As the night approaches, the pale sky shifts into sickly purples and greys, bleeding into the darkness. No animal sounds announce the coming night, just the solemn whisper of the prototaxites creaking in the wind. Through the thin atmosphere, the stars and the Milky Way illuminate the scenery with unsettling clarity. The fungal towers loom as pale shapes against the starlit sky, their silhouette seeming even more wrong in the darkness. You are utterly alone, a time traveler lost in an alien world. Your go time back machine home. sputters. What now? There you go, go back. You made it. Time to start rebuilding civilization. And while a hammer and saw would kill or click on. Alright, let me bring you in chat. Dude, that was eerily odd. Eerily odd. Again, I'm just thankful we're in the time that we are because uh, odds are we wouldn't have survived in those times because uh, they were not ha non habitable, non habitable, habitable, non habitable. Anyways, chat, I love in a nutshell so much. I feel like we just get so much educational value out of watching these episodes. And I love like the last one was about, you know, world underpopulation and how South Korea is kind of like at the front of that and then we get stuff about you know nuclear bombs or dinosaurs or whatever i just i love the wide range of educational value we get from this so let me know what y'all think in the comments and please show in a nutshell some love by subscribing to the channel and chat check it quarter million subs so if you haven't yet please smash the subscribe button and join the sauce gang family enjoy the rest of your day and remember to eat sleep and make beats and as usual be coming another that's all i got boom i'm out Coo -hoo. got a bit of love for the sauce gang Peace.